There's scenes here at Perry Park. Chris Lynn has taken the wild thing and oh, sent him. Oh, bang, 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 wow. Yeah. Hola, hola, hola. Welcome back, boys. Welcome back to Beyond the Sidelines. Well, that was interesting. I know. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Where are we today, boys? Sprung this on you. Oh. We're at the St. Lucia. High rise. Greyhound racing track. There we go. That'll <laughs> do. That'll do. We're at the trots. Uh, we're watching. We're at the dogs. Um, boys, boys, boys. Let's get into it. Fast five. Why not? Let's cut the chase. Let's get straight to hey, it. Just keep keep saying boys, mate. That was such a good introduction. Boys, 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 yeah. boys. All right. Um, do you reckon I can say boys one more time? No, just don't. Let's All right. uh, let's um, um, eh? let's hit the timer now. We're starting <laughs> off the biggest issue of the week. Typhoon Hagibus, Hagibus, however you say it. Typhoon Hagibus. This is a big one, boys. Biggest World Cup controversy ever. Uh, this will be the biggest rugby union controversy ever. Um, two games have been called off already. Thank you. So England, England, France, and New Zealand, Italy. Um, Scotland, Japan, which could decide that pool could that's, be That's probably off. the biggest one. That's probably the biggest potential the biggest cancel. Because... Um, Pretty much the way to think about that game is winner winner moves on, loser sta- yeah. loser goes home. So yeah, um, winner goes through on that but one. But if that game's called, if that uh, if that game's called off, uh, Japan top the pool, um, and Scotland go home. So well, imagine waiting four years to play in a World Cup and you uh, get knocked out because of the rain. So well, the Japanese public, the Japanese public will be singing in the streets. They probably won't be when this typhoon is coming, but they'll be very happy that they top the group. Um, and get a uh, preferable um, draw next round. I don't know, man. I think they would have preferred to come last. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, they thought Russia was a smoky. And Dude, they you guys thought, are funny. You know what? Rush, we've got to watch out for Russia. Right. Thank we you. should get on to the next, next one, next which episode. is, boys, speaking about Japan, Will Chambers has said he's announced that he's going to play rugby union in Japan. He hasn't announced the side yet, but is... Japan, Japanese rugby potential is that a potential future landing yeah. spot for yeah. retiring talent? Look, I, I think, think it is. Um, he's he's 31 years of age now, so um, he's getting to the end of his career, um, and this tends to happen with a lot of um, rugby league and rugby union stars as they go off to play rugby union in Japan. Um, the money is pretty no, good over I, there I as well. Gussie. Elaborate. Most, most leagueies who finish in the NRL they go to the Super League, but why would Will Chambers want to go to rugby union? I, I th- well, I think well, the Storm yeah. weren't going to give him okay. the the Storm weren't going to give him another year, so he was he was either going to be playing for why, the Sunshine Coast Falcons, and well, he 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 wanted to go. Obviously, he wanted to go over to Japan either for money or to keep playing at a decently but, high yeah. level. He used to he used to play union. He was on the bench of the Queensland Red Squad in two thousand and eleven. When they beat the Crusaders in the Super Rugby final, was he oh, really? He's there played union. He signed I a two-year. Oh. Yeah, he uh, he had a two-year contract with the Reds. Anyway, so, time on that one. That's why he's re- time. Finn. Um. All right. A league. A league starting this weekend, right? A league start. A league is starting this weekend. We've got a new side in the A league this year. Uh, Western United, basically Geelong, um, down in Melbourne. How high can they finish in their debut season, boys? Oh well, Fair. the sky's the limit, isn't it? Um, you know they've got they've got no benchmark or or previous previous years to um to beat. So you know they can finish as high as they want, and I think they'll finish they'll finish up there. They've signed really well, bringing Bessart Barisha especially yeah. into the side. Alessandro Diamanti as well. He's yeah. a fantastic player. Been playing in Serie A for years. Andrew Durante, Josh Risden, yeah, um, Panagiotis Kone as well. Coach. Like they've got some amazing players coming in. They poached. They poached half the Phoenix squad from last year. Um, the goalkeeper, I can't remember his name. Was is it Curto? The, um, I think so. Great play for the Phoenix last year. I think he won keeper of the year. Yep, Philip. Uh, and also the coach, of course. He was also at the Phoenix last year. So maybe they'll bring a bit of the Wellington uh, underperformance to Western United. Let's hope know, not. So. Let's hope not. Anyway, hope not. Anyway, um, we got to move they on. They have recruited really well. They have recruited very well. Mm-hmm. I reckon they can do whatever they want to do. Um, all right, boys. We got if Steve you can Smith. Achieve. Exactly. Yeah. Steve Smith got out for a duck in the Sheffield Shield, but that's not the real story. What did he say afterwards, Gus? Yeah. Well, it was it was a weird one. Um, the, I'll I'll quote directly from what Steve Smith said. So um, he said it was probably a bit of everything: mental, emotional, and physical. 
um, that towards the last uh, test match in England, it got to day two, and my mind was saying, keep going, but my body had shut down and wouldn't let me do anything. He was apparently... Si he, he got sick of batting in the Ashes. Uh, shows how much he carried the Australian side. Do you think his well, I think physical he, he body isn't it. keeping he up? He loves it. Yeah. Definitely yeah. loves it. it. Well, that's it, the thing, man. It's, it's, it's such a mental and physical thing. Yeah. That you can only do it for so long without, you know, suffering a bit of burnout. So, um, you know, should he have had more of a rest? Probably. Um, that would have been probably what I would have suggested if I was... If I had any authority in Cricket Australia, but... There we go. But it there also, you go. It all, Sheffield Shield. It also, um, it also shows how much he loves Australia, how much he loves the game of cricket as well, um, to to bat through the kind of pain he was in. Because he also had a really bad um, head knock in the previous, oh, I think it was the third test, where he was out. Um, and the ability to come back and still score runs mm. is unbelievable. Yeah, And batting through that pain is great. Right, time on that one. We've got a... We're going from one former um, uh, Melbourne Storm player in Will Chambers, well, now former, to another, Cooper Cronk. All right, so he won, yeah. the, he won the premiership this weekend. Weirdly, he lost his premiership ring in the celebrations, but then found it afterwards, so yeah. that's a whole other story. But does he deserve to be an immortal, boys? Is he an immortal? Is he one of the greats? Yes. Yes, he does. Right. Absolutely, he's um, he's won three championships back to back, back to back to back. So uh, mm. you've got to have some recognition for that. But I think he's probably the most underrated player in NRL history, and I think Gussie might back me up there. As yeah, a, well, exactly. He's retiring as a Chooks player, so uh, exactly. Yeah, he um, must be in your good books. Yeah, yeah, he's a life member now at the at the Roosters. Um, of course, yeah, he did win three premierships in a row. But what I find really impressive is he won it at two different clubs. Granted, it was the Roosters and the Storm. They are probably the two best clubs in the mm, competition. We spoke about that last week. But bringing that talent from the Storm and replicating it at a completely different side, completely new surroundings, is actually it's unbelievable. And he is one of the most hardest-working players I know. Doesn't have a lot of natural talent, but... Hard, it shows hard work really pays off. It certainly does. And that's time on that one. Boys, this week we had an excellent guest. I know we're going to say excellent, I guess. This is the first episode where Finn hasn't been at the interview. How do we feel about Shame. that, boys? Shame. My, uh, my elite standard of questioning. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, know, there are a few questions. Week, so Sorry, Gussie. I'm going to throw you under the bus here. There are a few questions. Oh, look. I thought my questions were all right. Um, Isaiah... Uh, answered them very, very well. He did indeed. We did have Isaiah Ranga Iti from the South Sydney Rabbitohs, formerly of the South Logan Magpies. Uh, he's one of their under 20s. He won the Jersey Flag Shield this year or Cup with um, that South Sydney Rabbitohs side coming from fifth in the league to beat. Uh, who did they play in the, the final? Canberra Raiders. Canberra Raiders. Um, Feel for the Canberra Raiders. They lost the grand <laughs> final and the Jersey Flag grand final. The Milk losing two. That just sucks. Anyway, here's Izzy. We are joined today by Izzy, who plays second row for the South Sydney Rabbitohs under-20 Jersey flag side. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm That's good. good. Thanks for having me. No problem, mate. Uh, welcome to the show. So you play for South Sydney Rabbitohs, under-20s Jersey flag side. How's yeah. that been for you? Um, it's been really good. Uh, I've, I felt like I've fit in quite well, especially with uh, moving away from home, which was really hard for me you know um polynesian background and we're all very family orientated and at home there's 12 of us so going from 12 at home all the time to being by myself you know it was hard at first and then you know the boys they just really helped me out really um yeah helped me adjust and yeah i'm loving it did you have any homesickness when you first left or yeah 100 percent yeah 100 <laughs> percent. i was uh I admit I was on my on the phone to my mum crying <laughs> most nights, mm. but um, I I just kept it in the back of my head, you know, like I'm here for a reason. You know, how'd you come over? Oh, how'd you get over that? Um, if you have, oh, <laughs> it's never easy, but <laughs> yeah, well, um, yeah, like I said, I just kept it in the back of my head. You know, I'm here for them. You know, my family, they they're driving me. They want the best for me, and you know, I'm better off being here than in Brisbane doing nothing. So, you yeah. still think Queensland's better than New South Wales? Oh uh, no, nah, I'm actually a, <gasps> I'm actually a blue supporter. Oh, so. no. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, why are you a blue supporter? Um, well, I moved over from New Zealand in uh, 2007, and that was the first time I ever watched State of Origin, and 
my dad, he went for the blues. So I was just like, you know, follow my dad. I'll go for the blues. But now he actually goes for Queensland. So. Mm. Oh, jump yeah. ship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you were happy this year as well. Pardon? I bet you were happy this year. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, Teddy yeah. going over last minute. Yeah, and so, last um, year too. So, <laughs> so yeah. who did you grow up supporting that? Uh, the Warriors. Yeah. yeah oh, the you, Warriors. Poor, you poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not so yeah. great anymore. The, so. Other, the other member of the podcast, Finn, he goes for the Warriors as well. So oh, we're okay. always... You know, taking the piss out yeah, of him. Yeah, ripping in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> struggling there. Yeah. Um, you made your debut for the side on the 28th of July, 2019. What was it like debuting? Um, yeah, um, it was fast. It yeah. was fast. It was so fast. Um, especially because I had been out for most of the year because I had uh, shoulder reconstruction and I, I injured my shoulder in preseason in the trial game. So, you know, it's so much mat f- match fitness that mm. I missed out on. So... When I actually came back, you know, I found myself struggling a lot to get back to the line, you know, getting up on D, lots of things. But, I mean, just to put on the jersey, you know, mm. I loved it. Loved every minute, you know. No matter how hard it was, you know, I just loved it. I loved it. And what's know. the uh, culture like in that Rabbitohs squad? Oh, it's great culture, you know. Yeah. Everyone's so pro Rabbitohs, you know what I mean? Mm. And everyone just loves footy. The members, you know, all the fans, they love us, you know. No matter what grade you play for, they they love you no matter what as long as you have that jersey yeah they love you so and it was a very successful year for the Rabbitohs as well you took out the final beating yeah. the Raiders uh 16 14 and you came from fifth place on the ladder yeah um so that final series um what what was said in that final series that made you guys really step up and um, well win you the know, comp? Our, um we have this core and it's a brother's core and that's just yeah. you know no matter what what's going on no matter what the score is you know you just look around and you look at, at your team and you just realize you know everyone's your brother and you just do whatever it takes you know so well, it was a, it was an amazing effort yeah. and i think you guys should really be proud of yourself and the the actual grand final was played at bank west yeah, yeah. um what was that like as an experience because i've heard it's a great stadium yeah yeah it was unreal you know when you just walk out and you just you see everyone it's like it's kind of like um like they're like looking down at you yeah so it's yeah so yeah, it's like, literally steep yeah yeah it is so it's like literally when you look up at the crowd they're all like literally looking down at you so it's like it's kind of daunting but you know God. It's, yeah it, it's it's great like it, i can't describe like you know what mm. i mean like it's yeah, yeah it was how, crazy how have you found being at the Rabbitohs comparing to other sides you've been in it, whether it be up here or anywhere else how have you found that kind of uh, camaraderie and the brothership of that compared to other squads you've been in um i think it's more just compared to because i played 20s here in brisbane last year for south lake and magpies mm. ah, yeah. yeah and then um compared to that i think it's just more professional as in where we train and how we train and like uh everything we do whereas south's you know great club you know i love that club and it was like we're training at a just at a university at uni gym and then in Rabbitohs we're, we're training you know uh we're first grade training and everything so yeah i think it's just yeah more professional the boys you know the boys always the boys you know mm. no matter what club you're at you're always gonna you know get a great bunch of boys some some of them kids and <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's just a part of footy so yeah do um you, you do you find it being at sydney south sydney do you find it to be more of a club rather than what maybe South Logan was like do you or do you is there a finish line for you where you can see the Rabbitohs NRL easier than if you were at South Logan yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. so that's one thing as well it's it's more direct mm. being in Sydney you, know, you got more direct path into the NRL mm. whereas at South Logan you know you're a feeder club for the Broncos and then they have like three other four other clubs mm. you know that they choose from whereas us you know it's 20s Canterbury Cup in our own first grade. Mm. So. And there's probably lots more eyeballs on you as well because there's the other Sydney clubs in there as well probably yeah. playing as well. Yeah, oh, no, it's 100%. a lot. It's more more tough, the competition as well. You've got a lot more quality sides, yeah. I believe, in the um, in the, uh, in the the under-20s in the jersey flag. Yeah. Um, your coach is Ben Rogers yeah, as yeah. well. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he, he played NRL um, as well for the Knights, Dragons, Rabbitohs and Panthers. Um, is that true? Is that the same oh, Ben Rogers? Oh, I don't think so. I don't no? Th- I, I think he, the f- the furthest he got, I think, was uh, reserve grade. Oh, really? I'm, yeah, oh. I'm pretty sure. I was thinking it was the uh, the Ben Rogers who played for about half a dozen <laughs> NRL teams. Oh, um, no, I don't, think, I don't think so. What What's what's he like as a coach? Great bloke, you know. Yeah. And it's crazy because at the start of the year, uh, oh, well, 
last year uh, at the start of preseason, um, we actually had a different coach. Oh wow! Yeah, so that was crazy. Like big raps on Ben, because he, um, our our original coach, he, like he got two promotions at work, so he had to actually step down from the job from being our coach, and it was crazy. Like we had no coach, and we just had um, Benny, and the cup coach. They were just helping us out and stuff like that. And then Benny, you know, took the role. I think that was like in like December or something and then yeah so it's quite an achievement yeah I mean it? from having no coach and then Benny exactly. stepping in and then we we take it out so now Perfect. the uh the last time the Rabbitohs under 20 side appeared in the grand final was in 2010 um and that team comprised of Adam Reynolds and James Roberts as well oh, wow. are you are you looking to be a player like these guys are there any and or is it is it your or are <laughs> there one. any players in the side that you, that you think can play first grade um in our side yeah yeah definitely um yeah definitely I'll, we got a quality side you mm. know and we're all we're all from different areas and we all just come to like we have players from out out west you know in sydney and some from north sydney and some from queensland you know so yeah. it's you know we're all made up of different areas and it's it's crazy the talent that we have in the squad, yeah. you know. So yeah, I definitely see a lot of the boys playing first grade, you know. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Are there any other Queenslanders in the squad? Yeah, um, Tino, Tino Stowers. Yeah, yeah. he went to Marsden. Yeah, that's oh, my boy. Oh, sweet. Yeah, shout awesome. out Tino. <laughs> yeah. How do you find that? Is that easier transitioning when you've got a Queenslander yeah. there? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, especially because um, where I lived in Logan and where he went to school, you know, it's co- quite close. Yeah, yeah, close. So, yeah, definitely so much easier. That's awesome. Know. And you went to school t- at at Ipswich State High School. Yes, as yes. well. Um, how important was Ipswich State High School in your development? Very, very, yeah. very important. You know, um, I love that school. I actually went to Ipswich in 2017, but at the start of the year, or at the end of the year, sorry, because I actually I went to Kumbaba first in the Gold Coast. Ah, oh, cool. Right. Yeah, and I got expelled from that school. <laughs> <laughs> Can we ask what for? Um, I just wasn't doing things I should have been yeah, doing. Fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, I'll ask you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, w- I wasn't doing things I should have been doing and I actually wasn't playing like footy at the time as well. And mm. I just thought like, man, I'm going to be a bum. Like, mm. yeah, I was I was scared to tell my parents as well, you know, like, you know, obviously, mm. <laughs> you know, I got a hiding for that. <laughs> out. And did you go to Ipswich to focus a lot on footy? Yes, but so that actually kind of came like it was getting expelled for me was more like a you know it was kind of a blessing in disguise you know because um I was I actually got kicked out right before graduation and then um one of my boys Sit Young Mace he's a mm. rapper from it which he um oh, he messaged me and he uh he said oh, also what are you doing next year like um like what's going on like would you want to repeat and I just told him like my whole situation what happened and he was like you know I could probably get you at Ipswich State High and you could probably finish at the end of this year and then I told my parents they said yeah doing it straight away so I went into the school had the interview and then yeah got in I started the next week and I had like had to do like two terms worth of work Mm. And then, so I got it all done. Literally, I think in like I think it took me like three weeks. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, I didn't really learn enough. I just <laughs> did the work to get it done, yeah. and yeah. then got it done. Got my uh, year twelve certificate. Came back in twenty eighteen, and then yeah, just yeah, focus mm. on footy from there. So, yeah. where would where did you play before South Slogan, or did you always play at South Slogan? Yeah, I've always played at South Slogan. Yeah, awesome. Um, I think I first played the. 2015, I played, uh, it was called Cyril Connell back then, so mm. yeah, uh, under 16's competition, so yeah, played up, and then was there ever since, and then yeah, last year I went to the... And so what was that process like, going from South Logan to the Rabbitohs? Oh yeah, it was, it was big, like it was really different, like I thought, but um, yeah, I mean I love like South Logan, uh, you know everyone there. You know it's, you know. Oh, I seen you guys did mm. the podcast with, with Guy. Guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, yeah, you po- he probably tells you a lot about yeah. what it's like there. And yeah, it's it's really good. Like I I love the the club. Yeah, especially everyone there. You know they they really like uh, just took me in, treated yeah. me well. You know. Mm. Yeah. That's good to hear. Um, 
Now, if there was an NRL side that you could choose right now to play for... <laughs> he already plays for one. <laughs> He's already contracted, mate. <laughs> you can't <laughs> ask him that. As in, as in first grade side. So if um, you had your pick to sign for any first grade side right now, what would it be? I mean, obvious choice would be the Rabbitohs, yeah, but yeah. other than the Rabbitohs. Um, I couldn't pick... I'd, uh, yeah. Um... Yeah, Rapidos. I mean, good, yeah. good, good, good. Uh, uh, yeah. Gussie, uh, you're not uh, asking that. You've asked that twice before <laughs> on yeah. previous podcasts. I'm not I'm allowing... I'm giving you waiting, the red light on I'm that I'm waiting one. for someone to say He's the Roosters, He's trying to get something mate. out of me. I know, what is he doing? <laughs> oh, I want him to sign for the Roosters, all right? Oh, probably. Maybe. Won't fit under the salary cap. Uh, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, have I asked... Uh, the Ipswich um, State High School, of course. And yeah. um, what was that competition like? Oh, um, yeah, it was tough. It yeah, was, tough. Yeah, it was a tough school comp. The um, yeah, that whole school comp. It's tough, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we actually, uh, well, I think we only won one game oh, throughout wow. the year. Wow. Yeah. So that was crazy. But I mean, everyone kind of makes it through to like the quarterfinals, and we we played PBC Palm Beach mm-hmm. Corumbin in that game. And we actually we we came really close. Like it was it was a tough game. I think they scored in like the last like three minutes to win the game, and then but and they ended up going on to win the whole thing. Like the whole wow. uh, even against wow. the Sydney team. So yeah, awesome. And you made seven appearances. How have they been? And how what do you do on a game day for those kind of things? On a game day, mm. I it depends. It depends what day it is. If it's a Sunday, uh, you know. I'd Pray in the morning mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, pray in the morning all the time. But <laughs> good, good. Um, yeah, game days for me, it's I don't think I eat. Oh, I would eat like if if I eat, it's just like a yogurt, banana. Mm. Yeah, and then like we'd get on the team bus and I'd just be there listening to my music zone out. You know, what's the go to? Uh, the weekend. Oh, good, oh, good. Yeah. Nice big, nice weekend. Yeah. What was your debut like? Um, my debut, it was. Who was it against? I can't even remember who was it against. Try and get that up quickly. Yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I well, you did play. It was against uh, Illawarra. Yeah, the Dragons. Yeah, the Dragons. Um, yeah, I remember that game. It was, it was hot that day. I was out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> Fair Understandably, yeah, you also um, got a pretty good win right there. Yeah, I think it was a seventy five wins and a draw. <laughs> hey, you what, was that? That, what was that draw like? Twenty all against oh, the Sharks. Yeah, that draw was crazy. They were, they were actually first place. And oh, then, were they? Yeah. yeah. So wow. We were. We, I think at the time we were third, and if we would have won that, I think <laughs> I think we would have gone on to first if we would have won that. Mm-hmm. One. Yeah, you guys. You guys finished fifth on yeah. the ladder. Finished very strong too. Yeah, at the end of the season. Um, yeah. So you had a, an amazing final series. Yeah. Like, what attributed to that? You think? Oh. Uh, I don't know. I think we just all wanted it. You, you switched know. on at the right time, yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was it, basically. You know, everyone got behind us. You know, the members, everyone yeah. everyone got behind us. And it, that that obviously, you know, helped us out here. Yeah, and what's better is you beat Gussie's Chooks. So yeah. um, we love <laughs> that. We love that on the uh, uh, podcast. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't, but uh, we enjoy it. Yeah. Had anyway. to kick a field goal to rub it in. You've got to do it. That's terrible. And you, you've played a few different positions as well. So you've played a bit of second row and yeah. you've played uh, a bit of prop. Yeah. Um, and come off the bench a few times. Um, what, what, what's your what's your favourite position to play? To be honest, I don't care. Put me wherever. No? You yeah. Know, I'll get Good. it done. A bit of halfback? Uh, I actually played halfback back in high school. Oh, really? Right, yeah. yeah. In like grade, I think it was nine. Had my man here running off me all the oh. time. Too. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't have much skill, so it was just always shot ball to him. Yeah, <laughs> mm. I, I'm guessing that would work against most defenses, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, physically, what was your transition from like high school footy to, I guess, professional and under twenties footy? Has there been much of a physical change? Like, have you had to put on kilos? Had to lose any? Like, what's that kind of thing? Because I know a lot of rugby league players either have to put on, take off, that kind of thing. Yeah, I actually haven't like had that discussion. Mm. Like. I guess they're they're happy with the size I am, you know. Obviously, not too happy with my fitness, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they don't expect me to be a full game player, you know. Mm-hmm. Just oh, yeah. as long as I get out there and do my job, you know. But uh, the transition, ah, uh, it's it's a lot faster. Yeah, you know, that's that's one thing. It's just yeah, and it's always going to get more physical as you go up. But just the yeah, it's so fast. 
so yeah. far. So yeah. And are they getting you into um, diets and training, more training, kind of like weight sessions and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so we, d- we train. We always, when we train, it's always gym and then out on the field afterwards. Yep. And, yeah, we've got a program that's doing us good there, so... Yeah, now I'm in the off season. I, I've, I've actually been training every day. Oh, ah, good. Yeah, that's good. I don't want to fall behind pre season. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so, uh, you're 19. So, yeah. are you al- allowed to play for the same side next year, or yeah, do you yeah. have to? Yep, yeah, you can play can, for the same side. Can play. So you're hoping for um, uh, a full season next year? Yeah. More hopefully, regular. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm blessed with good health and yeah, don't get any more injuries. Well, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So what's your plan for next year other than kind of trying to play full games, get your fitness up? What kind of things are you looking to do? Um, yeah, just play play the best footy I can, you know. Um, I definitely want to be able to try and um, – oh, just try my best, try and get into that um, Queensland side, that Origin, that 20 side. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah that's Playing with Tom that. Gilbert. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Gilly, yeah. We yeah. yeah, played with him back in 15s yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I used to yeah. Win, went to go to high school with him. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, oh, it's probably a conversation. We'll ask. (laughs) (laughs) We've really enjoyed the interview today. Um, Thank you so much for coming in, Izzy. It's been great. Um, And that's all. That's all she wrote. Thank you. Thank you so much for having (laughs) me. And welcome back, folks. Um, Thank you very much to Izzy, Isaiah Ranga Iti from, uh, that kind of rhymed a little bit, from uh, South Sydney Rabbitohs. Um, How good? Oh, he was brilliant. Told us a lot about the Jersey Flag competition. Um, and how important it is for the future of rugby league. Mm. And he also mentioned a lot about how players can get homesick um, when they leave and they go into state, which I found really interesting. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a big family man, is he? He's, he, is. he brought half the family in with him. He did. Uh, we couldn't fit everyone in the room. It was... It was, it was the, <laughs> the f- falling out of the room. Yeah. Uh, sardines. Anyway, Gussie, you were somewhere this weekend. We didn't even mention this, by the way. Finn is still on the phone with us. Uh, say hi, Finn. Yep, hi. Yep, awesome. Hi, guys. Hi, um, <laughs> Kelsey, you <laughs> went somewhere even better than Japan. <sighs> yep. You went to the promised land. You made your annual, I guess, not, pilgrimage. Not, Maybe yeah. not annual. Every time the roosters are in, you yeah, make a pilgrimage to Sydney um, to go to, what is it? Is it Allianz or ANZ? ANZ. ANZ. So, um, big old ANZ for the uh, grand final, um, 2019 grand final, the roosters versus the Raiders. Um of course, Arus is taking it out. My boys did the job. 14 points to 8 in a controversial game at ANZ Stadium. You know who Stadium. else is taking it out? Hey, their Six accountants. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Never heard that one before. Cheers. Yeah. Salary sombrero. Long, Good long mate. mate, continue. Yeah, all right. Anyway, um, um, the Roosters, of course, win their first back-to-back. Uh, win the back-to-back. Uh, uh, Good. Nice. Win a back-to-back title back to back. for the first time in 26 years. Since the Broncos in ninety two ninety three, um, and the grand uh, the Canberra Raiders were looking to win their first grand final in twenty five years, but couldn't quite do it. They put up a really good effort, but just couldn't. Was quite the get last there. one with Mel Meninga? Was it that one? That yep. classic. Was that- it was Mel Meninga's retiring um, mm-hmm. season. Up the milk. Scored a try, an intercept try. Um, yeah, they haven't seen glory since <sighs> then. The cream machine. Wait, <laughs> the cream. Oh, machine. actually, is, is is that a bit weird? Because before the game, he was he was the one who he blew the Viking horn. I did find he's, that weird. He, he works, works for the Titans. He works for the Gold Coast Titans. Yeah. I found he's that very weird. Of, but he's the head of culture and performance. So I believe he I, might be an ex legend. I believe like, he also um I believe he also voted on the Clive Churchill Medal as well as Laurie Daly. Two Canberra players voted on it. I'm not exactly sure about that. I have to have to check that, but I'm pretty sure two out of the three were Canberra players, which is interesting. Chuck White um, probably should have it. checked that before we. Before yeah, recorded. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very, exactly. I'm very sure it was them. Um, we'll get on to the first controversy, uh, controversy of the night, which of course was the Roosters train again hit after a charge down from a Canberra player, Is- Isaiah Soliola. I got that right. Um, this of course resulted in the Roosters getting the ball back with a full set of six, only thirty meters out from the line, and they actually scored off the back of this. What's the thoughts, boys? Hey, this is this is such an annoyance of mine. I yeah. I just hate this. Because we saw the same thing in the West Coast first. Yep. Was it Collingwood? Yeah. Grand final last yep. year. Yeah. The exact same thing. A trainer got in the way, the team lost, and it was a talking point. The trainers, like, they shouldn't, they should not be a talking point in a grand final. Should they be no, on no, the no. field at all? Be a talking point. They should be. They should be on the no. field, but they should be only during stoppages. So, for instance, in AFL, when a goal is kicked and everyone's going back to the center square, they should come on talk. 
and I, I don't know when it would Look, fit in an NRL. Maybe at a change well, it, of oh, there's not yeah. that many stoppages. If, so. you, if you watch the NRL, if you watch the NRL, trainers come on now as coaches. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, uh, for the most part, they're ex players, and they're coming on and they're coaching players. They're going, oh. You know, Papali's weak out on the left edge. Let's exactly. Run with him. Well, so that's like that. that they're, that's they're trainers coaching, in every sport. They're coaching the team. Mm, that's trainers it's in every not sport. The sport is mate. And I, do they? No, they? Not, they yeah, obvi- but not during play. It's this not, this obviously it's proves play. that they don't need to be out there in the third minute. No. Well, no, because they're out there the whole game, mate. When the team's in possession, the trainers go out. It's hilarious. Yeah. It's hilarious. But that's, it's a joke. It's so a joke. does there need to be a rule change? I think there needs to be, but there won't be. When we... at, at, at the end of the day, this was just a one-off. Mm. You know, we don't see this normally. But when would so you... I Toddy Greenberg's going to... He's not going to implement a new rule when there's no, no real need to... When, when would you allow okay. trainers to come on, though, other than that time? When is another suitable Injuries. time? Injuries. Injuries and stoppages. Mm. Yeah. Um, big stoppages, though. Because I think a big part of the league now is the uh, shot clock. Um, mm-hmm. 30 seconds to take dropouts. And I think there's a scrum clock, isn't there? Yeah. Gussie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I so honestly every, think that they should only be there after a team scores a try. So the, when the defensive side and the attacking side, they're having the rest after a try, that's when they should be on. And that's the only time they should be on. What about water? What about they're grown men. Aqua? They're athletes. They're playing 40 minutes and some of them don't even play 40 minutes. Yeah. Like you don't need water. Like, yeah, come on. Seriously, Fair enough. you're grown, man. Like, so that, hold your fluids. That's the takeaway. You don't need. You don't need water. <laughs> that's <laughs> the one for the kids. Okay. Get dehydrated. We'll, we'll, we'll it's get great on, for we'll you. We'll get on to the second controversy, or we'll be here all night. Um, Cooper Cronk sent to the sin bin for a professional foul on Josh Papali. Mm-hmm. Um, they said they uh, he tackled him without the ball, um, and he given ten minutes in the sin bin during probably the most important stage of the game. Um, the tackle was slightly early. There's no it denying was, it that. It was definitely a, a foul. But like, definitely... I, I don't think it warrants a sin binning. Uh, honestly, I believe this is about referees trying to achieve a sort of consistency. Um, and there should. Do, do you reckon there should be more leniency on these kind of matters in grand finals? Look, mate, not leniency because it's a grand final. And I think that's the same thing with state yeah. of origin. People seem to think that just because it's a bigger arena that the rules should change, and that's yeah. not the case. That shouldn't be the case. That being said, it was an early tackle. A mm. penalty try should only be given, uh, well, a yellow card in that case, should only be given if a try was going to be scored or likely yeah. to be scored. Yep. Harley's a big bloke, I get that, but he was still, you know, seven, eight metres from the try line. But they, they've um, called it an act of foul play. How? It's an early tackle. Look, Cooper Cronk, he read the play slightly wrong. And he, I, and he got there a bit early? Exactly. Slightly early, though. I if, think it was a, a, if it was a grubber kick, if it was a grubber kick and he tackled him, yellow card every day yep, of the week, yep. Kronk, you're a bad boy, go sit in the bin and think about what you've done. But that was, it was yeah. an early tackle. It, that, that, that decision also, that could have cost the Roosters the grand final as well. We, that could have been the main story. And honestly, I was on the train after the game and I was reading all these news articles saying, worst call in grand final history. And I was thinking it was the Kronk decision, but it's not. It's the next de- next decision we're well, talking about, I think about, the Kronk boys. decision was like just such a meathead decision from Kronk. Like just don't, you're that close to the line. Don't give up but a penalty that easily. If he doesn't go for that <coughs> tackle, Papali does score. You, you don't know that. That's the whole point. But he so wrote, if, he, if, he, if he scored, shouldn't have been a yellow card then. But I don't think he would have scored. But you just said he should have sco- He will right. score. So he, if, if he let him go, right. he would have scored. But he's not going to let him go. Exactly. He, he's got to make the tackle. Mate, and I was, thought he read a, and made a tackle. If it was a grubber kick, it's a yellow card. But yeah. at the end of the day, he was there half a second early. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's yeah. not a yellow card. It's and, a penalty. It's a slap on the wrist. And when you slow Cooper, things down... Think about what you've done. Yeah. And when you slow yeah. things down, it always looks worse, right? Hmm. Um, right. So, yeah, yeah, move on. Yeah, we'll move on to I the third the, controversy well, as, as well. Just saying, when we talk about this, something big take the big takeaway is that the referees are far too involved in this match. Yeah. Um, are they whistle happy? Are they trying to, you know, as a referee, you shouldn't be making yourself the center of attention. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that's what we've seen all year from the NRL referees. Yeah. Um, be that the guys out there in the middle or the bunker. So, 
Right, yeah. yeah we'll, 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 we'll move on to the third controversy of the game. So main referee Ben Cummins signals six again, then changes his mind to fifth tackle. Um, Jack Wyden, of course, sees the six again call and reacts by getting tackled, thinking the Raiders have an extra set. And they are forced to hand over the ball. This was eight minutes before the game was over. So this was inside the last 10 minutes. Um, personally, I think this is one of the biggest overreactions I I have ever seen. I think the media have sort of pushed it out of proportion to what it actually was. The decision was actually correct in the end. So the fifth tackle was correct. It was more about the confusion that Cummins caused. But you see, um, if you watch if you watch the replay of the video, when Jack Whiten receives the football, um, Ben Cummins yells out fifth tackle about four or five times, and yeah, he actually he makes it res- very clear. I know it's it is tough to hear with when, when there's ninety thousand people there, and that's probably added to it as well. But Jack Whiten also receives the ball, um, and and. Cummins has already got his hand up Mm -hmm. and he's literally looking directly at Cummins. I don't know how you can not see that. He's right in front of you, um, yelling fifth tackle. um, And look, everyone's thinking that uh, the Raiders were going to score off that play as well. They thought they were going to score. They couldn't, they, um, they couldn't crack the Roosters previously when the Roosters had one less player on the field. I mean, we were talking about it before. I think the biggest issue for, the Raiders at that point was they didn't take the chances exactly. when they needed to. We were talking about the pass by I can't remember yeah. who it was. Joseph should have Lador. been a de- yeah. should have definitely been a try any yeah. day of the week. Yeah. Just didn't give it when he needed well, to. That call did not Look, cost them the grand final. No, absolutely not. Look, bad calls, you know, they happen all the time in sport, but that's part of the point. You know, it's how players react to the pressure and the adversity, and I guess the bad calls. That's exactly. part of being an athlete. We're humans. Every, you know, every everything doesn't always go perfectly. Yeah. But I guess that's the difference between you know cha- champion teams like the Sydney Roosters and the Canberra Raiders, who are you know the first losers. Yeah. Um, when Peter Cronk was Simmons, uh, the Roosters the Roosters didn't throw a hissy fit and go, oh, that's so unfair. You know, you're you're a terrible terrible referee. Yeah. They bounced back and they played. You know, they their next ten minutes they played as a team. They didn't let it beat them. And that's the difference between champions and losers. Exactly. I also think what Campbell said was really important. Um, the Canberra Raiders had a massive opportunity in that last uh, minute when Kronk yeah. was off the field. Uh, Joseph Leilua had uh, a chance. He beat Latrell on the outside. He had a chance to give um, Rapano a free run to the try line and he decided to go himself got and chuck greedy. an offload. Yeah, he got a bit hungry for a try. And... Then you go, what, 10 minutes later, Latrell Mitchell, that dangerous left-hand side, gives the ball immediately off to Daniel Tupo up the sideline into Tedesco. It, yeah, it shows the difference between that championship side and a Raiders side that have been brilliant this year, but they're just not at that quality. No, that the but, definitely are. not. But what about the, the old sports adage, fellas, of you've got to lose one to win one? Yeah. Um, not, not true for the no, Western Bulldogs, what, mate. Uh, I guess well, that's what the, Ra- the Raiders have got to hang on to now. They've got a young team. Um, they're going to lose some of that. I think Jordan Rapana apparently on his way out, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully for the main part, they can keep the crux of that squad together. And if they do that, man, they could be dangerous, not necessarily next year, but the year after or the year after that. I mean, the Roosters um, will probably be poach all their players, but, so who knows? Oh, mate, the Roosters aren't signing they anyone. Be. They're they're bumping up contracts, if anything. They're giving Latrell, Joseph Manu, increasing their contracts. Hmm. Campbell, it's, it's easy when you're the only team in the NRL not to have a salary cap. So. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> Weird. Funny how this dominance <laughs> like occurs out of nowhere. Yeah. You like that one, Gussie? Yeah, Brown right. paper bags? Yeah, Easties. That's yeah, no. funny. Anyway, we're moving on to NRLW. Yes. So the Broncos women absolutely smashed the Dragons, 30-6, oh, to yeah. six, um, to win back-to-back premierships as well. Good on them. So Roosters and Broncos both getting back-to-back premierships. You know what else? I assume they weren't at the Pokies till 1 a.m. the night no, before. No, they, they weren't at the Pokies. These ladies are a lot smarter than the men. Um, they work. They've worked hard all year. They've only lost one game in NRLW history, guys. That's insane. That's amazing. And it was against the Warriors. Like, who would have thought of that? I don't know one. 
game, like the Warriors, the whole the culture of that franchise is just. I feel sorry for a Warriors fan. Yeah, I also I, feel sorry for our listeners for dealing with this um, dodgy aux cord that's away, connecting mate. Finn to the to the motherboard. Give us a talk. Now nah, you sound. We'll get him back. One moment. And we've got Finney back, thank the Lord. His uh, Orcs Cord situation is all sorted. We're moving on to the NRL State Championship. Yeah, right. So... Hi, guys. Still <laughs> to be back, so... <laughs> the lag's still there, but we keep pushing on. <laughs> anyway, the yep. Newtown Jets uh, defeated the Burley Bears 20-16 to in an absolute epic, right? They came from 16-6 down at halftime um, to win in the last seconds of the game. After a chip and chase, took a lucky bounce and landed My in the Lord. arms of Jackson Ferris. That was let's, one of the best plays let, I've ever seen. Yeah, probably. let's play the audio. Grayley, they've stacked the short side. Kick over the top for Militalo and Ferris. Ferris has got the bounce. Jackson Ferris wow. has got the bounce. He'll score an amazing try. And the Jets will steal the state championship. Wasn't that unreal, boys? Mate, that's the, unreal. Isn't that the second week in a row that they've, they've it, won... Well beyond the siren. Well, they won it last is week indeed. in yeah. extra time, didn't they? Winning yep. on the hooter. In yeah. the similar circumstance. 87th mm-hmm. minute. Similar circumstance. Yep. Yeah, it was. And that was the same thing, wasn't it? It was a chip behind. Yep. When, you think, of, when you think about the bounce on that one Under as well. Sticks. Dude, they, they seriously have the foot, football gods on their side. They really do. They actually, they actually finished in eighth place in the Canterbury Cup, which is pretty much... It's the New South Wales version of the Incha Super Cup. Wow. Um, so they finished eighth. And managed to win all four finals games to win the comp. That is a magical run of ever I've seen one. It's crazy. Um, right, we are going on to our favourite segment. Our favourite our favorite segment. segment. You know what Guys, it is. Ask, ask me where I am. Where, where are I you, am. Finn? I'm Finn in Japan. Finn. F I N N. Finn. Finn. F I N N. Finn. Finn. Yes, yes, it's our segment that we all know and love. Finn, Finny boy is in Japan. He's over the seas. We've had some problems connecting to you due to Wi Fi and data issues. But how have you been in that typhoon riddled nation? Yeah, man, I'm pretty good, pretty good. Uh, week three now in Japan. So that's pretty cool. Uh, since we last spoke, mm-hmm. I've gone from Fukuoka to Oita to Kumamoto to Oita, and now I'm back in Fukuoka. So I've gotten around a bit. Well, uh, I've gone to if, a handful of games, which is cool. Well, if it interests you, I've gone from Brisbane to the Gold Coast, back to Brisbane, Mate. back to the Gold Coast. Jealous. Down to, no. um, what's this town called? Down to Black Rocks Camping, and then back up to Doesn't Brisbane. Happen. Well, I've, be- I've been down to Sydney... And then fell asleep yeah. on a ferry to Parramatta and got very sunburnt. Yeah, you're peeling. And I'm peeling now, and it's not good. You got your nose isn't very go appealing. Be, go the eels. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll be yeah. here all week. I'll be here oh. all week. I walked into their leagues ta- club with a roosters jersey. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Um, anyway, what about the rugby um, though? So yeah, I think we're we talking about the rugby. We're talking about I've your different. Yep. Talk about the rugby. Talk, talk about the rugby. Just some of the games I've been to. So. Uh, France, USA, Australia, Uruguay, and France, I'm Tonga, Macau. I think. Yep. I think I'm missing a few. I'm missing a Probably. few. But basically, boys, what I've seen over here is just great rugby, great atmosphere. Um, those Welsh fans in particular really bring an atmosphere to, I guess, Japan that I didn't see in my first week here. But the actual rugby, guys, um, it's being marred a bit by that typhoon, isn't it? Has a little bit. Let's talk about that a little bit more. We mentioned it at the start of the episode, but this is potentially one of the biggest events to happen at a Rugby World Cup other than Invictus that we've ever seen. <laughs> of course. Cheers, Morgan Nelson Mandela. Trainer, of course. Um, yeah. Um, no, but this would be the most controversial moment in the history of rugby union. Definitely. Obviously, we've had those two games called off at the time of recording, so New Zealand, Italy, and England, France, but the one that would be more decisive is mm. Scotland, Japan. Certainly. Now, I think mm. we touched on it before, but if, if that game's called off, Scotland go home because of rain. <laughs> Imagine being Scottish, getting called <laughs> off because of rain, and then going home to more rain. Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> can't think of anything worse. Anyway, continue, win. continue. You can't win. You can't win. 
mate, it's just it's really rough on them. Um, it'd be good for Japan because if that game's called off, they top the pool. Because um, interestingly, uh, the way pools are decided is if you're equal on points, you don't go to points difference. You go to who won the matchup. So um, because mm-hmm. Japan beat Ireland, they would top. They would come first that way. Yeah. So um, in all likelihood, I think the game will be played. I hope I, so. I guess, I guess I'm optimistic because um, I think the storm would have passed by then, but it's more of a case of uh, the damage. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, in all likelihood, I guess the quarterfinals, we're going to see Australia, England. That looks like that's going to happen. Yeah. Wales, France. Uh, mm-hmm. New Zealand will probably play, I'd like to say Japan, because I think Scotland might get up this Sunday, but again, we'll see. A lot and of South our Africa predictions are coming true. Ireland, but... Except Japan. I don't think... Uh, I, I predicted Japan. Except, I said I Japan. Didn't. Except for Russia. Russia didn't make it Russia didn't make it through the powerhouse. I didn't say they'd make it through. You did say it, No, I did not. You said they would win the whole thing, mate. Well, that was obviously (laughs) a joke. Are you (laughs) serious? The Russian powerhouse of rugby. (gasps) God. God, they would win. The Russian powerhouse. Um, Who do do the boys think would win in this Scotland versus Japan game if it's played? Scotland would win. You think so? Yeah, man. Scotland. I don't think so. I'm calling it Japan. Stick with the jabs. I like it. I don't think... For years since, so the Rugby World Cup pool draw was done two years ago, which mm. is, man, that's such an issue in itself. Yeah, it's Why terrible. the hell was the draw done two years ago? Mm. Um, but anyway, since then, this has been the game to watch for Japan because they never expected to beat Ireland. They never I... expected to beat Ireland, but they have. Um, but this game was always going to be whoever, you know, whoever wins progresses, and it's pretty much the same scenario now. Um I don't think Japan are ready for that pressure yet. They don't right. play in these big games as often as Ireland, as uh, Scotland do. Um, mm-hmm. Scotland, they play Six Nations against you know England at Twickenham every you know once every two years. Uh, you know they play at Murrayfield, the Fortress. Um, they use the pressure at least a bit, you know, a bit more than Japan. Well, Scotland um, were coming off a massive win as well against uh, who they play. Uh, Russia? No, it wasn't Russia. Yeah, it was, it was Russia. Some, it was yeah, Russia. it was. was it? 63 nil, I think. Was it Russia? Yeah. It was Russia. There you Could go. have been somewhere. Either um, way, they played yeah, powerhouse. Again, it's still... Um, I think Japan stalled more out of the two of them. Japan's the informed team, but Scotland's the better team, I think. Certainly on paper. So, mm. boys, that'll be huge. That'll be huge. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a late night in Japan, I think, if, if Japan get the dubs. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to know more about yeah. your plans to uh, during this typhoon, uh, mate. What what are you going to be doing? Hunkering down? Well, no, so the typhoon, it was supposed to hit where I am. Um, I went somewhere with the game I'm going to on Saturday. That was supposed to be the game that was supposed to be cancelled. Um, but the typhoon, Hajibus, has it's a super typhoon, apparently. The strongest typhoon of the year. So, thank God it's missing me. But, I mean, the people in Tokyo... Um, if there's anyone listening who lives in Tokyo, you know, bunker down. Um, I imagine it's going to be quite a quite a whirlwind. Um, yeah, it should miss me. Sunny skies for me, hopefully. So, yeah, can't mm. complain. We might be down a host, Gus. Might mm. be down a host. If only, if only. You won't. Lose, um, you won't lose me, gents. I'll uh, I'll come back in spirit form just for the podcast. So. Uh, great, great. <laughs> That's what you were. Couldn't have any more of you. Um, I really liked what Jamie Joseph, the Japanese coach, has done with his squad. Though he's had them in training for like a year oh, or two. It's such a smart idea. Do you yeah, think no, we could see that happening more? No, because I think the thing about the Japanese players are they aren't playing at top, top clubs, or at least they mm. aren't playing for clubs who are outside of the Japanese rugby union. Yeah. Um, but if they're playing in France, uh, those those French owners aren't going to let them go train with the Japanese national team. No. Um, so, no, you won't see more of this. Absolutely not. Would you like to describe, Finn, what Jamie Joseph has done with his squad to all the listeners at home? How so, mate? What part? Well, the fact that he's kept... Well, he hasn't kept them, but he's signed all of his players to basically the Sunwolf. the A team of the See, um, yes, the, yeah, the A team and the Sunwolves. So, um, they were playing. Yeah, they've been training together pretty much all year. And even if they haven't been playing for the Sunwolves A, uh, Sunwolves first team, they've been playing for the Sunwolves A team, mm-hmm. which is 
yeah, they've been playing games against uh, like the Hurricanes B team and things like that. It's it's a great thing, mate. It's a great thing for Japanese rugby. But I guess I not I don't worry about it. But I think going forward, if you're being realistic, you know these Japanese players, especially if they're performing the way they are, they're more likely to get poached by English, mm-hmm. Welsh, and French clubs. Yep. Um, yeah. In which case, those oh, those French owners, man. Oh my days. Oh my days. The French I, owners, they are so tough. Um, if it, um, if it's not, if an international, if a game's not during the international window, they don't let you go, mm-hmm. which might sound fair, but like they're very strict yeah. type thing, like very strict. So um, it's a great thing if they can keep doing it. But yeah. I think I, what needs to happen now is I think the rugby championship is currently at four teams. Um, it needs to expand. We need to see Japan and we need to see Fiji yeah. Um, with possibly a second division, including the likes of Tonga, Samoa. That'd be um, very interesting. Who else? Who, who, Uruguay. Mm-hmm. Um, and but I think that's something that World Rugby needs to reconsider because I'm not sure if you guys heard about this, but the... What? No, <laughs> just he, just he just made a Uruguay and I'm a girl joke. But anyway, continue. Uh, um, so during this year, there's a lot of talk about a Nations League, um, which is... it's a. Have you guys seen that in football? The Nations League? Oh, no, uh, yeah, thing, for, for the Europe uh, for the European yep. qualifications, yes. Yeah. yeah um, no, it's, it's separate now, where it's a league. Um, yeah. There was talks of doing that, a 15-team league in Union and wow. having a first division and a second division. But World Rugby scrapped that, more most likely because England said no. England are very financially stable. Well, they're, they're very, very selfish. They're very Brexit um, means Brexit, so... They are, mate. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think... I think speak to, speaking to some of the Fijians, um, I got the impression that uh, what they need and what they want is more tier one games. And to yeah. do that, the rugby championship needs to expand. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think, I, think for Japan. The, I think for the Japan, well, quickly, I think for Japan, I think it's less about the players and more about the system. I think this is the blueprint for them and those smaller nations going forward is kind yeah. of keeping okay. the players together learning how each other play. I think that's the most important thing. Anyway, quickly touch on NRC. Um, some big results on the weekend. We had uh, the Western Force beating Brisbane City by two points, so 33-13. Great game there. Uh, Queensland Country beat New South Wales Country Eagles uh, 21-14. Uh, Melbourne Rising lost to Fiji and Drua by four points. Another good game, um, 36-40 to Fiji and Drua. Uh, and the Canberra Vikings beat Sydney, thirty-six to twenty-six. What a round! Harry Wilson is having, yeah, what a Wait, round! This... Harry Wilson's having a blinder this season. Yeah, um, and so are a lot of the Western Force uh, players. Some massive games coming up. So this this round coming up is the last round of NRC regular season. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Force are through. Canberra Vikings, coached by BBC old boy Darcy Swain, mm. yep. more than likely through. Yeah, um, but from there, it's a bit of a lottery from third through to. Uh, Brisbane City down at sixth. Um, but the game to watch is Queensland Country versus the Fiji and Drua. Yeah, um, They play. You know, that's fourth versus fifth. And there's one competition point that separates the two. So whoever wins, final going footy, through. Baby. Yep. They that's are going the through. Yeah. We're going to move on quickly so because we're running out of time. But that's awesome. We have a new league starting this year. Not a new league. We have the start of the A-League. This weekend, boys. We mentioned yeah. it before. It's such a joke. Wow, How's such that? a joke. How's that, mate? It's not that bad. Mate, it's... Uh, I mean, I would say MPL is probably better. <laughs> like, if I'm going to be honest. Look, the mighty strikers, am I right? But I want... Believe me, I want to I want to love the A-League. I want to. It's a love-hate relationship. But, um, you know, there's no... Unless there's promotion relegation, I can't really see the point. Yeah, but I, I guess I what's that. more confusing for me is that the top six go through to finals, and there's mm. only eleven teams. Yeah, you can what? have a bad year that and still play like, finals. Like, to be fair, with the introduction of Western United, it's less of a joke. But last year it was the top six go through, and there's yeah. ten teams. <laughs> and yet you had teams, you know, sneaking into sixth spot, who had only think, won. You well, know, the raw six games out of twenty two. Yeah, the Raw yeah. snuck in there last year, and they were losing games to the victory five goals to one. Yeah. Like mm. that's embarrassing. No, At home, that's because um, that's because we've seen some teams really establish themselves as 
top top sides in Australian football. So I guess Melbourne Victory and Sydney FC, mm -hmm. but the rest of them they kind of seem to, you know, kind of middling, no, stagnate or like yeah. they're really they're really second tier compared to those guys. So well, um, what are yeah. our thoughts um, on this season? Do we have a a tip for first place? Um, forget the rest, just do first. I like Perth Glory. Oh right, okay. Well, they they finished um, they finished up the top uh, last year. Yep. Got to a grand year. final. Yep. Um. So yeah, I I've got it's between them and Melbourne Victory I've got, for me. I've got Sydney FC um topping. Um, I think they'll win another one. Mm -hmm. Um, they have just been clinical. Um, Finn, do you want to give your prediction or are you? He's um. One oh, minute. One minute. Right. He. I think. <laughs> one I, th <laughs> I think he did predict the the victory though. I think he did too. So we'll move on quickly to that. Um, we've got a bit of cricks yep, before we yep, get on. Yep. Bit of Bulls Masters Gussie, cricket. You've got that. So round four results. Toomble drew with Northern Suburbs. Um, seven for two ninety five for Toomble. Nine for four hundred four declared for Northern Suburbs. Four hundred runs in a day is unreal. Sandgate defeated Sunshine Coast, 10 for 244 versus 10 for 303 and 1 for 74. Winner Manly drew with Redlands, 8 for 337 versus 10 for 397. Gold Coast defeated Ipswich Logan, all out for 298 um, versus all out for 321. UQ beat Western Suburbs and South Brisbane defeated by Valleys. Right, round five yeah, sees... Ipswich, Logan versus Toomble, Sunshine Coast versus Western Suburbs, Northern Suburbs versus Sandgate, University of Queensland versus Gold Coast, Valley versus Wynnum, and Redlands versus South Brisbane. So plenty of exciting fixtures in the cricks coming nice up. Nice quick wrap-up. Finn wants to say something. Oh, yeah, so, um, yeah sorry about that, guys. It just Oh, a bit of a scenery so before, change. Yeah, before we started recording, um, there's signs around my place saying uh, you can't record in your room. Uh, and, yeah. It just got a bit of a not a telling off, but a bit of a because they're very nice over here. But a bit of a, you know, oh, you can't yeah. you can't do that there. So someone uh, got in I trouble. Get you got in trouble. Do a quick runner, but I will say I didn't pick the victory. I picked the victory to top yep. the league standings. But I think uh, Melbourne City will win the whole thing. Ooh, so, anyway, interesting. Well, a lot of the experts that. have actually tipped um, City to take it out as well. Mm -hmm. Can it be the year they do it? Because they have been pretty disappointing in previous yeah. years. Gussie and I saw them the other week. They uh, won 5-1 over oh, They City. were average early on. I and mean, they strikers. conceded the first first goal to the strikers, but, you know, they were clinical at the end. They had a game plan. Yeah, the, the strikers just ran I, out of gas indeed. as well. I just think that they're kind of due, um, almost. I think they've got so much money, or so much backing yeah. from the City group that... No, if they don't start winning soon, then like, what's the problem? But Definitely. I love the fact exactly. they're away strippers. The um, they're away strippers. They're old Melbourne Heart home strip. So yeah, that's pretty oh, cool. It's totally. a it's good throwback to the uh, Melbourne Heart days. Certainly. Anyway. Um, quickly while we're on cricket, uh, I'll just mention our new partner quickly. Um, My Club Tap Boys. They've been with us since day one. Um. We want you all to go over there, sign up, um, experience the fun of playing fantasy based, uh, sorry, playing cricket fantasy based on people you know with players at your own cricket club. Um, if you want to get your club involved and put yourself in the game, um, get, in get in touch with us um, and we'll get in touch with My Club Tap and set that up for you. Um, to get on that quickly, we'll, before we leave, we'll cover some AFL rumors because it is the trade period at the moment. Um, Tim Kelly. Massive. Yeah. Absolutely massive. He's gone from Geelong to West Coast. That's confirmed. That's done. When was All... that confirmed? That was confirmed just recently, wasn't it? Yeah, like a yeah. day or two ago. Two days ago. Um, um, Campbell, Campbell, how much does that affect both squads? Um, massive for G, uh, for West Coast. Um, yeah. They might even have to sneak up my rankings for our way too early predictions, which we will be releasing next week. Mm. Um, you can't be doing predictions. That's way too early. <laughs> that's the whole point um, uh, you're funny funny guy Finn uh, I think it really affects Geelong as well because Geelong were not heavily reliant on him but he was definitely a big part and he kind of had his standout season with them this year um, yep. we then saw Brizzy Lions making a new addition Grant Birchall from the Hawks that's confirmed they're the only real two uh, confirmed ones we then have a, out of the big one Ed, Eddie Betts to Carlton there's a lot of Carlton rumours this year oh yeah that's, that's great but at the I same time 
it's a really old face. He is an old face. He's a, he's a bit of a veteran now. To Carlton, kind of, should they be going young? Well, they, they were, I think he'd experience it I as well. I also think they're already so young. Bringing him yeah. back adds a bit of experience and also adds... He's still an excellent player. He's still one of the top players well, in I, the league. I have Carlton sneaking into my top eight. They may do. Yeah. They may do. And with the amount of players they're linked to, depending on how many they get, they could definitely make a run um, for the finals. Oh, Campbell. Campbell, the big one, though. Literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big Coxie. Um, big Coxie. Does he go to Does he go to the Dons? Does he don uh, the Bombers strike? I don't do think, think so. I don't think yep. so. But I would love to see it because I hate Collingwood. Um, <laughs> speaking <laughs> of Essendon, uh, Orazio Fantasia, who was suspected to be um, requesting a trade, hasn't. He's staying put, so that's massive for them. Speaking about Carlton again, Sydney's Tom Papley might be headed that way for a number nine pick. That would be humongous for them. Um, that will add to their... Then if they add a few players here and there, they could really be uh, in for a big one. Um, they're also uh, linked to Jack Martin, Dan Butler, uh, Sam Gray, which would be massive for them as well. These would all be huge for them. Um, they're all rumoured. Jack Martin and Sam Gray would be massive. Um, you'd then see also... So from Geelong back to the Suns. So he was at the Suns, went to Geelong. He's going back to the Suns. That's uh, Ruckman Zach Smith. Also seen Aiden Bonar uh, from GWS. He was a 2017 first round pick, potentially going somewhere. Uh, we just know they're trying to offload him potentially, which could be a massive get for any club who gets him. There's obviously talent there. Uh, G- this is the biggest one, in my opinion. Jeremy Cameron and Lockie Whitfield from GWS are yet to assign. Mm. They're yet to sign yeah. on. They're contracted till the end of next season. Usually, you like to sign players around this time or get rid of them think, or they're the free agents next after, year. They'll be mm. after them, mate. But I think most of the AFL guys, you know, there's a big lure to go back down to Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cameron, I could see, you know, I could see him playing for Essendon. Um, that's Ooh. probably an early tip. But, um, I could see him playing for the dogs, mate. <sighs> Yeah, no, I think hope, hopefully he sticks with the Giants, mate, because we'll, we'll be pretty rubbish without him, I think. Well, he's the we Coleman. Were, as, he's, sorry, continue. Exactly. He's the oh, Coleman no, medalist. We, so. we were just so dependent on him in the in the big dance. But uh, mm. I will say there's pro- probably the biggest talking point from AFL this week. Dusty. Dusty. His car. His car still parked at the G. He's in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> he's still getting over his hangover. It's still parked there. My well, lord! How, how long to... since it, well, it's been over a week? It's been well over a week. Two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Thirteen days by the time this podcast is released. Surely you can't chuck him a fine for that. Anyway, oh you're also God. potentially losing Jonathan Patton at the Suns, so to the Hawks. So you could be say, yeah. could be a mass exodus. Um, you're also seeing the Adelaide squad kind of imploding a little bit, getting rid of some players. Um, yeah, one of those players is Brad. Ending. Brad Crouch is looking for a move to either St Kilda or Gold Coast, the ones that's rumoured. Um, yep. But Jeremy Cameron and Lucky Whitfield, if they don't sign on now, if they're saying, no, we're not going to sign another deal, they will get traded. Exactly. They will get traded this window, wow. and you'll see two of the game's best players move to back down to Melbourne. The two moves yep. you kind of see a lot are players coming, coming from interstate back to Melbourne, or yep. you see players who are in Melbourne who are from WA go back to WA. The Dogs have had ter- terrible history of that. Um, that's why GWS... Uh, not GWS. That's why uh, West Coast Eagles and Fremantle are usually quite good because a lot of players, they don't necessarily draft, go back home, which, I mean, we saw the under-18s um, Western Australians win this year, so they've obviously yeah. got talent. Um, this is well known. Well, mate, mate uh, the players who play in Melbourne, I think they get sick of the spotlight. And it's, I think yep. when we spoke to Anthony, Anthony Corey mm-hmm. back at, well, that was literally three months ago. That's insane. Mm. Um, that is crazy. He was talking about how, like, you know, you get recognized everywhere. So I think the players who are playing in Melbourne who want to trade, they get sick of that. Yeah. And it's probably the other way for the players who are playing interstate. Yeah. They probably, they probably want more of the spotlight. Mm-hmm. So it's about finding that balance throughout your career. Um, yeah, so it's it's interesting stuff. I don't yeah. think Freya are very good either, by the way. No. Uh, I've also... Yeah, no. I was listening to a podcast um, of... Was it this, this podcast? Or? <laughs> I wish it was. Um, it was Bob Murphy interviewing... Uh, so, former 
Bulldog, interviewing another yep. former Bulldog who's sadly retired this year, Tom Boyd. He said that he kind of liked being up north in GWS because, again, the media attention wasn't that big, and especially for someone who'd struggled with mental health issues in the past and lots of hype and trying to fit into a squad where everyone's a first-round pick and there's so much talent there. You are looking over your shoulder all the time, and a lot of players deal with that. When you move back down to Melbourne for... Uh, to the dogs, there's lots of issues with injuries and lots of issues with overhype. And the money, he said, played a big dish- issue with it. He was getting paid $1 million a year. Huh. So, that'll do it. I mean, he did re- sadly retire. But anyway, I think that's all we got time for. Any last comments, boys? Oh, special shout out to uh, Fergus Russell. Um, he, no. asked, he asked me to do this. Um, he, uh, he set us up with. Isaiah, which is very, very helpful. So thank no, you, Fergus. I don't mind doing shout-outs, Gussie, but that's the only free one we do. Yeah, it's okay? the only free one. Five, bu- five bucks from now on. I okay, think. Fergus, we'll charge um, you five bucks now. Awesome. No, well, I'm boys, that one's free. I met, I, that, that one's free, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly, exactly. exactly. Okay. Anyway, um, if you haven't already followed us, uh, please go follow us either on Facebook, which is just Beyond the Sidelines, or Instagram, which is underscore Beyond the Sidelines underscore. Make sure you give us a subscribe on YouTube as well. It's Beyond the Sidelines as well. Let us know where you're listening as well. We want to know where you're coming from, whether you're listening on Facebook, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We'd love to know. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we got, boys. Yeah, I'm Thanks. happy with that one. Uh, good take. We we did that in one take, by the way. One Just take. Everyone know. One take. Awesome. Cheers. See you next week.